Hello there, Ray here, and welcome guys to the brand new Minecraft update. This is a 1.16 Nether update, and it is massive. Look at all the crazy stuff we got here. We got so many different variety of blocks, as well as new type of armor that's super OP, new ores, new biomes. It's very overwhelming. But yeah, guys, we are going to go over a review of this entire snapshot, all the different changes, and we are going to cover a bunch of bug fixes that were fixed in this version as well. And remember guys, after you watch this video, head on over to our Twitch. We are going to be checking out this snapshot together with the viewers. So you guys can hop on with me as we play around with the newest things. So that should be super exciting. And I'll see you guys there after this video. You can find those links down below. But let's go ahead and take a look at all these crazy changes. One of the new biomes that they added is the Crimson Forest. And this is a new biome that generates in the nether. So if I look down, you can see I'm currently in something called the nether waste. You can see it right here. If I move over here to this biome, you can see it's called the Crimson Forest. So it's actually a different biome type. Now before there was only one type of biome across the entire nether, which is kind of referred to as the Hell Biome. But now there's actually new biomes added throughout the nether dimension. The Crimson Forest has this mycelium-like carpet for the floor. So if we pick block this, it's actually called a Crimson Nylilium. There's also other types of blocks inside of this biome. Here's one right here. This is another warp block that's actually generated in the floor. You can also see some brush, kind of grass-like stuff that's growing on top of this. And this is crimson roots. So it's like roots coming out of the ground, pretty strange. There is, of course, also nether rack in the biome as well. If you go down a little ways, you see we go into nether rack. There's also some really big vegetation, but there's also these little teeny vegetation, crimson fungi. They're kind of like a mushroom, but they're like a little bit bigger in size. Over here we got some big trees, pick block this. This is a crimson stem, so these are kind of like massive mushrooms. And here is more of your netherwort block that makes up the kind of the mushroom tree. We also got some vines coming out of it, and these are weeping vines. Wow, very cool. They're just directly attached to the block. That's really cool. So they're like small when they first grow and they keep getting bigger as they get longer. I could definitely see you farm these up very similar to like uh, vines in the overworld. And they call these things huge crimson fungi. You also can see a bunch of particles kind of swirling throughout the air. These are crimson spores that swirl throughout these biomes. So it's very cool kind of particle effect. If you guys don't know what spores are, it's kind of like the seed of a fungi. Over here you can see one of the new mobs. This is a hoggling. So if we pick block it, hoggling spawn egg. Very cool. It's uh, quite large, at least the size looks it. If you turn up the hitbox, it's kind of smaller than what the actual size is. They might change that because it does seem a little bit uh, different than what it appears to be. But yeah, they have a massive tusk and they got this uh, very bristle kind of uh, hairs on top of them. And they got those really deadly looking eyes. I mean, their eyes just look like they're kind of ghostly. There's also another type of fungi in these forests. These are the warped fungi. They kind of look a little warped, a little bit flatter. There's also that new light source that we've seen in a lot of the images. It kind of reminds me of glowstone, but it is something different. It's called shroom light. It sounds very mushroomy when you place and break it. Very cool. It goes very well with this type of biome as well. Now we still got the old glowstone as well. They haven't like removed it. They just kind of look very similar. Here you can also see these uh, weeping vines coming down from the ceiling which looks really cool. I can imagine if they constantly grow, they'll eventually reach the lava down below and they probably don't burn. None of this stuff will probably burn, which is pretty cool. The biome size of this is quite large. I've been flying around it quite a bit and it is still the same biome, but I think over here we're reaching a new type of biome. Notice as I move in here, it was getting some kind of visuals, but you can definitely see, there it is. Ah, yeah, it switches over the whole entire fog situation changes, but we are now in a different biome. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. We are in Soul Sand Valley. This is one of the new biomes that they also gave a sneak peek to. We have, you see two different types of soul sand. This is the normal soul sand that you're used to. And this is the new one, Soul Soil. Wow, Soul Sand and Soul Soil. Quite a tongue twister there. That looks very cool. It looks almost kind of like dunish or sandish with kind of waves or ripples in it, very cool. We also got the bone blocks, the big, huge, massive skeletons that we've seen them show off. Like there were some prehistoric monsters in this biome before. Uh, we also got a new kind of bluish block. This is warped wart block. It's kind of like the reverse of the red wart block. 
And down here, you can see we got some new kind of ground textures. It's bluish. This is warp nylilium. So it's kind of similar to the red uh, version, crimson nylilium. Here we got the warped nylilium. So you kind of see a contrast between like the red and the blue quite a bit. Now when they did come out the blue one, they said that they kind of want to not only have the entire nether be uh, red based as there wasn't quite enough variety with that. So they also came in with blue and I think it does fit very nicely, especially in this biome. Let's continue to explore it. We can see we got the massive uh, fungi. This is a warped stem. Another one was a crimson stem. And these things also have these uh, shroom lights that are part of them. Very cool. Let's move in over here. You can see the entire biome. Uh, it's kind of stretched out among us. I did turn on hitboxes so I can kind of see entity sizes, but a lot, wow. A lot of endermen spawning here. I wonder if their spawning is higher in this biome because that's like all I see is endermen. Maybe only endermen spawn here. That is pretty crazy, but there's another skeleton, some more of the soul soil, and a lot of these massive fungi. Let's go up here. We got some more vegetation. We got some kind of smaller stuff. Nether sprouts. What are the big ones called? Warped roots. Nether sprouts. Almost sounds like they can grow up. Here's some more nether sprouts. Let's take a look at them with F3. Currently they don't show any data about them growing over here. But that's definitely going to be something we're going to be looking more into with our snapshot stream. And I'll start streaming shortly after this video becomes public. Here we got some more warped nylilium. And then we got this blue texture here which is warped warped block. So it's like the red warped block, but now we have the warped warped block. Very <laughs> tough things to say. And this biome consists of a lot more of the warped fungi. The other one, it was really rare to see a blue one, but now we see a lot more of those. But you occasionally do see the opposite ones here as well. So here is a crimson fungi. And oh, we even got some of the crimson roots here. Okay, so it is um, uncommon, but you can find some of the other variations in the other biomes. I wonder if they're like kind of like competing against each other. Some of the other fungi can like kind of take over in this spot. That would be pretty interesting to see if they would actually uh, spread. So let's move deeper into this biome. I'm definitely seeing a lot of endermen, so I think maybe endermen only spawn here. And the blue biome is the warped forest. So we see the crimson forest, and now we're seeing the warped forest. And in the crimson one, we've seen a lot of the hoglings. In this one, we're seeing a lot of endermen. We're also seeing spores coming and swirling around this biome, except they are the blue variation rather than the red ones from the crimson biome. So crimson forest and the warped forest are very similar but contrasting in colors. And this is a really big section of it. And it's right beside a crimson forest. So you can definitely see the difference between them. And you can see kind of how the fog changes. So we got more of a blue fog, here more of a red fog. Definitely see hogglings in this one and definitely see endermen in that one. Let's see if we can find some more of that soul sand valley. Okay, what in the world is this? This must be part of the soul sand valley. Oh yeah, this was what they showed in the images. Oh, that is so cool. So what is this? This is basalt. Oh wow, and there's a bunch of it down here too. Yeah, this is all the same stuff. It's almost like it came flowing out of the ceiling and uh, congregated down here. It's not underneath the surface though. Very cool stuff. Let's see, is there more of the Soul Sand Valley? Oh yes there is, wow, there's a lot of it. Yep, there's these big huge pillars coming out of the ceiling, going down to the ground and kind of spewing out. And there is our blue fire, yay! So they gave a sneak peek to this, and the way you get this is from having a flint and steel and putting it onto this soul soil block, and that will make it a blue fire rather than if you put out anything else, it'll be the, uh, normal fire. So that is how you get that. It has to be on this block. It can't be like on soul sand. And you can't put it on like the side of blocks either. Wow, this is a much bigger piece than we've seen before. You can see the bones. You can definitely see how thick the soul sand is. There is another rack at the very bottom of it and it, geez, soul sand just covers everything. Just completely covered with it. Here we got a bunch of the soil as well. Looks like it kind of patches around places. Bones are very cool. You guys ever need a bunch of like bone meal <laughs> you can come here and pick up a bunch of bones it looks like we got a lot of gas spawning here i don't really see that many pigmen there's pigmen in other biomes but i don't see them in this biome here so maybe gas only spawns this biome it looks kind of void of most things and mobs should be able to spawn on most of these new blocks because they're all 
full of cubes. It's definitely a wasteland. Let's see, I don't think it's slow walking on top of this. No, it's not slow. Just soul sand is kind of slow. This is normal speed. And they did say the soul sand valleys are more open. And they talk about how there has been leftover fossil remains from unknown creatures from the past littering this valley. We do have particles falling, but they're not like spores. They're actually ash falling from above. It really gives a really cool effect, just like seeing ash fall downwards. There's also kind of this light blue color they have for the fog around these valleys. Here we just got a skeleton to spawn. They did say that skeletons can spawn in this biome. That's pretty scary. I see some endermen over here. So maybe we just got like gas and skeletons spawning in these biomes and endermen spawning and those and hoglings spawning in these. I do see pigmen also spawning. There's some pigmen. There's also a new netherite ore that can be found in the ground. It looks like there was only two in this one. It took me quite a while to find it, but it can be found on lower levels of the nether. And I went ahead and cleared away quite a bit underneath the ground to find this. And you can mine this stuff up and put it into a smelter and smelt it up. It does smelt kind of slowly. You get these netherite scraps. Those you can take and put them into a crafting table. And you can make netherite ingots out of them with having four scraps as well as four, four gold ingots. And that will make one of these netherite ingots. Then you can use these with diamond tools. So if you have any of your diamond tools, like a diamond pickaxe, and now you can actually upgrade them. So one of these netherite or plus your diamond pickaxe will give you a netherite pickaxe, which has a lot of very useful properties. You also can see that there is recipes for the crimson, as well as the warped stems. You can put them in your craft table and make uh, planks out of them. You can also make everything else you can do with planks with them as well. So there's like crimson slabs, crimson plates, buttons, and there's also uh, the warped variations of them too. But there is no uh, boat variations for these. And the netherite, can also be turned into blocks, very similar to you see like diamond blocks. Now with these new tools, they are very useful. They have a lot of cool properties. One of them is that you can actually throw them in lava and they will not burn. So you can see these items are in the lava, they're floating, they're not burning, we've got a helmet. We also got uh, the ore as well as the scraps and also the ingots all in there. None of them will burn. The netherite themselves, all the tools and armor also have higher enchantments, meaning that it's more likely for them to have better enchantments when putting them into a enchanting table than diamond. But they're still not as good as gold, they say. And the netherite tools will work faster and longer. We got here, we got a pickaxe, and it actually goes to this pretty well without any enchantments on it. And you can see the durability is massive. It's over 2,000. If you have an unbreaking on that, it's four times as long. Think of all the work you could do just with a single pickaxe without having to repair it. And this goes for all the different tools as well as weapons. You can see armor here has higher toughness. So armor toughness is quite high. Here on the chest plate, it is three toughness plus eight armor. And these also got a knockback resistance, so you're less likely to be knocked backwards. So that's going to be very useful because it's kind of annoying when you get knocked backwards, especially if you fall into something else or fall into like the void. And this stuff just looks crazy cool. Look at this. It's like some massive beefy armor you got there. A lot of very cool stuff coming to this 1.16 update. And we'll be taking a closer look at all the different things and all the different properties of different things and how you can farm them up. So something like these mushroom trees, you can go ahead and bone mill them and you get the massive mushrooms. This one went right through all, uh, all of this nihilium here. That's gonna be a lot of fun trying to find ways to uh, farm everything up as well as just play around with all the different properties and color types that came out with this update. They also did some other technical updates as we kind of talked about earlier in the, in the video. They changed the way that the nether is called. So the main nether biome is now called nether waste. They also made shipwrecks as well as ocean ruins less common so that you're actually more excited when you find them. They also added a new command which is locate biome. So if you're looking for a particular biome, so you're looking for crimson forest, it'll tell you where the nearest one is. So that's very useful. You can do this in the overworld as well. Now there is still a bedrock ceiling on the nether dimension. It looks like there might be some problems to do with uh, trees growing above it. I'm not sure if that's quite intended. I don't think they're actually breaking bedrock. Yeah, it seems like they just started growing underneath them and they clipped completely through. They also added those new particle effects, which is like the ash falling, there's the crimson spores, there's also the warped spores, and the soul sand fire particles that come off of those. They also changed the rendering for entity shadows, so now they will be positioned on the ground. They also did a bunch of different bug fixes in this version. Shift clicking 
Stackable items into enchanted tables will no longer make them lose their NBT tag. So if you want to collect those rare uncraftable arrows, you want to do that uh, before this version. There's also a problem with item frames. Redstone signal coming out of the back of them was being interrupted if there was other types of blocks in the same area as the item frame. This is something we definitely seen in my AFK uh, fish mob farm and it made it pretty difficult to do. So it's nice to see that they fixed that. They also fix capes, so capes no longer move while sneaking. It won't really detach from the player either. They also made it so that if you hold on both mouse buttons, items will still be used properly in item frames. They changed it so that baby pigs no longer turn into adult pigmen when struck by lightning. So they, so they probably now turn into baby pigmen when struck by lightning. They fixed a really annoying bug that had to do with wearing armor that had mending on it. So if you'd gain XP's while having a mending piece on, the game would often not put it into something else that needed it and would often try to put it into this piece even though it was full and would end up on your XP bar. But they fixed it now, so now XP will go only into items that need to be repaired from the mending. So you don't have to take all your armor off when you're trying to repair it anymore. They fixed the problem that the arm animation was happening on both arms when throwing a potion. There was a problem that items were popping off the back of pistons when they were retracting. So I'm guessing they no longer push you. Yeah, the little centerpiece there used to come back here and push the player if you stood up against it or any entity, and it looks like they fixed that. So you can't really use this to align entities anymore from the back. They fix it so when you throw stuff from on top of a horse, they don't instantly break upon trying to throw them. They now change it so that you can make cats unsit when they're sitting on top of stuff like beds or chests. So that's nice in case you're trying to sleep in that bed. And now made it so redstone dust also has a texture from underneath so you can see it through the glass. They fix a bug where carrot on the stick was not breaking. They fixed it so that flower pots will now have a texture underneath instead of being messed up. Fix a problem with rain particles showing up one block lower when surfaces like lava or water were there. They now change it so if you give magma cubes or slime the no AI and you break them so they're smaller and you kill them so that they come up into smaller guys, they will still keep that no AI tag. They fix it so that item entities that are sent on top of eggs no longer will crack them and break them. They made it so that the ignited TNT as well as tridents and arrows will no longer change their color if they fall on blocks like soul sand or snow layers. They also made it so cats will still give you gifts even if they are sitting on your bed. They fixed the problem with slope power rails being moved by pistons so they no longer break off. They moved the composter which used to be here in the miscellaneous tab over here into the decoration tab. So we should be able to find it here. There it is right there. You're able to remove curse enchantments on items by repairing them in your inventory. And now you can no longer do that. They fixed it so villagers that are zombified by zombies will no longer despawn even if they have been traded with. They now change shulkers so they can no longer teleport to non-solid faces and now they will teleport to more solid faces. They now have it so that fox will run away from polar bears since polar bears tried to kill them. They also made consistent when dropping items either from the hand or from the inventory, it will make your hand do the animation of dropping it. They also made it so the endermites won't have their color change when they fall into blocks similar to soul sand. They fixed the problem to do with when the player would break shulker boxes in creative, it would put the shulker box in the wrong area. They also made it so that knockback resistance is now scaled properly. They also made those uh, pillager patrols will no longer spawn near villages. They also made it so that when walls are stacked vertically, they'll no longer have a gap between them. There was a problem that foxes were sleeping on top of honey blocks even in full daylight. They fixed the problem that using the spawn point command was not actually working if there's monsters nearby. So those are all the major bug fixes in this version. Some pretty big ones, considering that they also came out with a really big update to do with the biome in the nether. And remember guys, we're going to be doing more testing with this as well as another update during our snapshot stream. So make sure you guys turn on all your notifications across all the different social medias, which I am on. That way you guys don't miss out on the snapshot stream where we open up a server for testing with the viewer. So it should be a lot of fun. You can find links to all that down below. Overall, it's a very cool update. I'm really excited for it. And if there's something that I forgot to cover, please tell me down in the comments. I like, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys during the stream. Bye-bye.